fashioned a thick glass. This is my life, the first day of my new life. I am the 5.3 million people in the United States living with traumatic brain injury. I am no longer a son, a daughter, a husband, or a wife. I am no longer the old me. I have a lost identity. Every 21 seconds, someone in the United States suffers a traumatic brain injury. By the time you finish watching this film, another hundred people will join this silent epidemic. How will I find this person deep inside who cannot speak as I did? He must pause to think. How can I slow the world so I can hear the difference between the screeching truck brakes and the whispers of kindness, the difference between the music and the noise? How will I walk with my gait, incontinence, and poise? This story began for me when a drunk driver pummeled through his third red light in Philadelphia in 1993. The story continued for the next year as I repeatedly got lost only blocks from my apartment. Then it continued when I decided I would not abandon myself. I would let requited innocence fall into my arms, embrace the space that was not empty with despair and anger. I tried to participate in the afterlife of life and not lose my sense of ground. By being, remaining grounded, one can actually live in the world, even when the bright lights and cold temperatures of rebirth become unbearable. I walked alone for years, embarrassed that I had become a suffering body, for the elation in my soul wants to run. And then I discovered there are others, exactly like me, only very different. This is the story of eight of the 5.3 million. This is our story. My name is Laura Napier. I'm the filmmaker. And for the last 12 years, I've been living with traumatic brain injury. I was 15 years old. Uh, I was out partying with some friends, and um, that evening I took a ride in my dad's Corvette. I was uh, hit by a drunk driver and um, flew out of the car 137 feet on pavement. My name is Joe Anaya. I'm from Santa Fe, New Mexico, 25 years old. But it could also be what you see, um, like interpret what you uh, see from like a from your perspective. So, I mean, this place? Yeah, so like if you would, you know, if you would see in the cell, like what would strike you if you were looking at the prison? Um. This is the first day of my life. I swear I was born right in the doorway. I went out in the rain, suddenly everything changed. They're spreading blankets on the beach. The only way I could put it is to feel like I was house-sitting in me, that this wasn't really me, that this was a place I stayed at. And it was a great place and all that nice things, but it really wasn't mine. I didn't feel connected to it. Uh, my name is Brian Patterson, I'm 38, well, about to turn 38, um, and I was 29 when I got assaulted, and uh, from that assault I was in a coma for about a month. Yours is the first face that I saw, I think I was blind before I met you. And I don't know where I am, I don't know where I've been, but I... Know where I want to go. You paint, right? You went to school for painting and stuff, so I just wanted you to tell us about your paintings. They're really beautiful and interesting. And I just paint because I don't can't remember anything. That's why I paint. My name is Jessica Gutman. My roommate from boarding school is driving, and I guess she hit a tree. 
and then I could have my spleen busted, burst, and my brain but burst. And so I thought I'd let you know. Yeah, these things take forever. I especially am slow. But I realized that I need you, and I wondered if I could come home. I need to show people that, that okay, maybe we can't, I can't do my job. You know, I'm not physically disabled. I, I, I can walk. I can talk. I had decided that I would walk from the very spot where they found me laying in Deming during my injury to Chimayo, to the San Radio. 360 miles. My name is Joe Zamora. Remember the time you drove all night Just to meet me in the morning And I thought it was strange you said everything changed You felt as if you just woke up I had finally decided that I was just developing Alzheimer's And that I was, uh, or that I was just going crazy I'm Barbara Zamora I had just gotten off a city bus and was walking along the sidewalk to get to the corner and the sidewalk had buckled up where there had been a big crack in it and then it had buckled up and I was striding. I used to stride all the time when I walked and I wasn't looking down until I hurt myself. I never looked down when I walked and I hit that and I went flying through the air at about three feet off the ground and then realized that I was going down and going to smash my face, so um, decided to see if I could turn in midair and came down on this side of my head first. This is the first day of my life. I'm glad I didn't die before I met you. But now I don't care, I could go anywhere with you, and I'd probably be happy. There's a misconception that children who are shaken and suffer a traumatic brain injury because of being shaken, that it's always done by this monstrous child abuser. And usually it's someone who has never hurt a child ever in their life. It's a moment in time. She was injured by her birth mother's boyfriend through shaken baby syndrome. I'm Kathy Salazar, and this is my uh, daughter, Chloe Grace Salazar. So if you want to be with me but these things there's no telling We just have to wait and see But I'd rather be working for a paycheck Than waiting to win the lottery uh -huh. So, but I can't distinguish uh, between one or the other You know, the head injury or the uh, uh, PTSD I mean, the PTSD can be... Can be uh, uh, cured, but the head injury, it's going to take, I, I mean, it'll take a while for me to, to tr distinguish the difference between both of them, you know. PTSD is for the layman, it's post-traumatic stress disorder, right? Well, I'm uh, Charlie Gallegos. I was a staff sergeant in the Army National Guard. Besides, maybe this time is different. I mean, I really think you like me. First, it was thick gray fog. Then it started to lift and hover like cataracts. Then it was now, and now is sort of like white. But you stand out, and everybody sees you stand out. And you know you will never fit in. You have been where no one else has. And you wonder if you'll ever fit in again because you have been where no one else has. And it makes you feel insignificant. 